I guess many of us today have smartphones, right? I also assume that we have some sort of weather app installed to see if it's rainy to carry an umbrella or if it's sunny to carry sunglasses and a hat or if it's going to be a snowy day to gear up well and keep warm. In various parts of Africa, stories are told about the indigenous knowledge system of rainmaking. What is perhaps startling to some is that long before the advent of technology and science, there are tales of rainmakers as far as the cultures of Indian America to the people of the Amazon and native Australia. The ability to influence and correctly predict weather by some indigenous African cultures remain a mystery to science and technology. African indigenous knowledge system of rainmaking is widely perceived in a negative connotation. We are here to change that. Hello besties and welcome to another video on African history, perception and culture. I'm so excited to introduce to you this new series of African indigenous knowledge systems. Today, we are going to look at the African indigenous knowledge system of rainmaking. This video will be split into two parts. In the second part, we are going to expand on the only female matrilineal monarchy in the world, the Rain Queens of Southern Africa. Thank you all for coming. Feel right at home and be sure to subscribe with post notifications on. Our history as African people has been attempted to be erased and tampered with. We have people who have created impact in our community and we cannot exclude them, nor can we deny our future generation of this knowledge. Let me tell you a story of how my grandmother became my virtual weather app. Growing up around her, I was very inquisitive and often would watch her go about her day patronizing her with many questions. One thing was clear, she could predict the weather, not only for that day, but the next rainy season. In fact, she was not the only one who could do it. Many of her generation possessed this ability. This was not voodoo, witchcraft, or sorcery as our generation is led to believe, nor was she born from a royal bloodline, but instead she could tell by observing everything around her, from how her kettles behaved, to the ant colony moving their food and queen to settle in the trees. These were among some of the elements that helped her predict the weather pattern. I come from a community of nomadic pastoralists who rely on agriculture and animal husbandry. This way of life helps us live in harmony with the ecosystem. There is a strong symbiotic relationship between the two which virtually helps us sustain each other. We take care of nature and nature takes care of us. It's our supermarket where we collect fruits, seeds, and grains. It's our pharmacy where we can find healing. But most importantly, it is our school where we can learn from about how best it likes to be treated and what hurts it. We are people who traditionally did not depend on a payslip, but our source of remuneration came from mother nature. 
our indigenous knowledge system is very diverse and sometimes I can say misunderstood. In the African indigenous knowledge system, rain represents many things. Our people could often tell from the way the animals behave to the direction of the sun and the moon to the shape and strength of the fire. Rain is symbolic for fertility of humans and animals. Rain plays a pivotal role in the cycle of life. Hence, African indigenous knowledge system embraced the signs of nature to shape the unique connection. I once asked her how she knew which cloud direction could bring about rain. Well, she held my hand and walked into the cleared land of the farm and as though she memorized it, she will point at her cattle, the sky, the trees, the star, the moon and the sun. She would point at the ant hill and say, see how they march out to the tree while carrying the grains and their queen. See how high up the tree they settle. It will be a season of floods, she say. This will then allow her to plan on when to start clearing the land for cultivation or renovate the shelters around her compound. The way the sky and the earth connect is through rain and actually water is one of the first elements mentioned in the biblical story of creation we were made overseers of this creation thus when the earth is hurting all living things could feel it rain in africa is so crucial and dates back as far as our remembered history and way before the advent of industrialization for example, the Munika, Nguni, and Valoberu people of Africa have for many years held annual rain dance ceremonies to salmon, moisture, mist, and fertility upon the earth. We are born of kings and queens, so let us know our history and let us empower ourselves okay guys i hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching and check out part two of this video to be released in the coming days let us know if you have any suggestions on topics about namibia or africa in general and we will surely look into it to catch all our latest videos as they air feel free to subscribe with post notifications on. See you in another one and goodbye besties.